Welcome to the celebration of Holy Mass here at St. Luke Catholic Church. Today is the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. If you wish to support our parish financially, please go to www.stlukechurchssj.org slash donate. You can also mail a donation to the church or in-person drop off. Thank you for your continued support of our parish. May God reward you abundantly. Our celebrant today will be Father Cornelius, and he will be assisted by Deacon Walker. Let us now quiet ourselves as we welcome the Lord who is in our midst today. Interest Antiphon, turn your eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere.
God is good. And that's why we come to worship Him and to give Him the praise. To praise Him for He's indeed good. In today's gospel, the church presents to us a Canaanite woman who does not belong to the house of Israel. One who is a foreigner. She approached the Lord and begged the Lord. And her blessings were given. If we approach God, if we persistently approach God, God's blessings will indeed be given. We are all gathered here as one big family. So let us let us bring the praise of the altar of the sacrifice, asking as we begin our celebration in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the Holy Spirit be with you all. And good morning to you, my sisters and brothers gathered around together as one family and to prepare ourselves to celebrate this sacred mystery worthily. Let us pause for a moment. Be truly, truly sorry for our sins, especially the sin of pride. Let us ask him to be merciful on us and to grant us I confess Almighty God and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in, in my thoughts and in, in my words, in, in what I have done, done and what I have failed, failed to do, through my fault, through, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed, Blessed Mary, Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to, to pray, pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and
let your hearts pray. O oh God, who have prepared for those who love you good things which no eye can see, fill our hearts, we pray, with the warmth of your love, so that loving you in all things and above all things, we may attain your promises, which surpass every human desire. We ask this for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. From the book of the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1 through 7. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just. For my salvation is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigner who joined themselves to the Lord minister to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants. All who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and hold to my covenant, them I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house a prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be will be accepted on my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 11, verses 13 through 15, and 29 to 32. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable. Just as you once disobeyed God, but now have re received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now disobeyed in order that by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all of us. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus' homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, church. Oh, let everything that has bread give God praise. Amen. Amen. 
Oh, give him praise, give him glory, give him honor. For God has always been good to us. If you woke up this morning, give God praise. Because I guarantee you that there are folks who did not wake up this morning. And we woke up this morning not because we are beautiful, not because we are anything. We are just but breathing today because of the grace of God. That's why we come to worship him and to give him praise. Amen, somebody. Yes, indeed. Today, I'd like to reflect with us something a little bit controversial. And I titled it, Shameless Persistence in Prayer is Evidence of what? Of Faith. Shameless persistence in prayer is evidence of faith. You know, I use the word shameless because sometimes when we go to ask for a favor, we got to remove our pride, right? We got to humble ourselves, right? And no shame in the game, but sometimes you got to be ready and willing to accept the shame in order to gain and to get whatever it is that you're asking for. That's why the story we heard in the gospel today is so important to us as Christians. I don't know about you. I don't know if you have been asking God for a favor that you haven't received. You know, Mother, Monica, Saint Monica, who's a mother of St. Augustine, she was asking God for a favor for over 30 years. Over 30 years. Because her son at that time was a douchebag, right? But eventually that douchebag became a saint. Amen. Shameless persistence in prayer is evidence. Evidence of faith. Jesus tells us of this story. Of this woman who was our Canaanite. A Canaanite woman who is not a Jewish woman. In other words, she already, in the eyes of the Jew, she's already a step down from humanity, right? We're told that Jesus had to withdraw to the region of Tyre and Sidon. This was after his encounter with the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes who rejected his message, who were persecuting him who were tormenting him. As a matter of fact, they were plotting to kill him because his popularity is now beginning to grow. People were beginning to listen to Jesus. People were coming to him to be cured. And so this got the people in authority upset. So what did they do? They began to plot against Jesus. And so Jesus now had to leave the region of the Jewish people, the cities of the Jewish people, and he had to go to a foreign land. I hope you know that Tyre and Sidon is not part of the land of Israel. It's part of the region of Palestine. So he had to go to a foreign land. Mm -hmm. Jesus had to cross the border. Amen? I know you know what I'm talking about. He had to cross the border. Illegally, because ain't nobody gave him visa. But he went to another city because in his own hometown, in his own city, the chief priests and the scribes and all those Pharisees and Sadducees were plotting to ruin his career. And so he took his disciples to Tyre and Sidon. He went there to do what? Three things. To rest. Because yes, a brother need a break. You know, a brother need to take some time out and get some break. He also went there to pray, to have some quietness and pray. He also went there with his disciples so that he can have an opportunity to teach them. Because at this time, his disciples were literally undergoing training. They were still learning from him. He was teaching them all kinds of things. So he wanted a peaceful place where he can be with his disciples and instruct them a little bit more. So while he had crossed other people's border and he was in a city that was not Jewish-owned, this Canaanite woman, this woman who was not Jew, came to Jesus. 
As a matter of fact, she probably had done her research. Amen? Mm -hmm. She had done her research before she approached Jesus. You know what I'm talking about. Some of us don't do our research before we approach the throne of grace. We don't do our research before we come to Mass. It's like the Mass is like an accident waiting to happen. I know you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you know, yeah, you, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. You know, we come to Mass not preparing ourselves. You know, like we just show up. And nothing wrong with showing up. But this woman had done her research before she approached Jesus. Because she was able to do some Bible study to realize, you know what I'm talking about, she did some Bible study to realize that Jesus was the son of David. That's why when she came to Jesus, she didn't just come and say, hey, what's your name? I hear, I hear you're popular. No, she came to Jesus and what did she say? She cried out, Lord, son of David, have pity on me. Remember, she wasn't a Jew. She did her research. Some of us Christians and Catholics, we take a lot of things for granted. We can just wake up, put on whatever clothes we have, and show up in church. Now, God loves you for showing up. But God will love you even more if you did your research. If you prepare your heart and your mind. You prepare your soul before you come to church. Yes, if you prepare your gift that you are going to give to the Lord, not just show up and put on and your hand in your wallet and whatever single comes out and that's what you put in the box. No, do your research. If you don't have anything to give to the Lord, that's okay. Go down on your knees and say, Lord, you know I ain't got nothing today, but I'm still going to go and praise you. And that's okay. As long as you do your research. So she approached Jesus and said, Son of David, have pity on me. My daughter is tormented by demons. She knew that Jesus was a miracle worker. A promise keeper. He was the light in the darkness. He's the one who can cure every disease of our life. She knew. She didn't approach Jesus like it was an accident. Even after doing her BS, you know what I'm talking about, right? Bible study. I know you've been thinking other things. No. BS means Bible study, right? As soon as she had done her BS and approached Jesus, Jesus didn't pay her, may pay her any mind. Jesus kept walking with his disciples. Jesus kept walking and walking. And the woman didn't stop. She didn't stop there. She kept walking with the Lord. <laughs> See, she kept walking. Some of us, we are, we are called hit it and quit it Christians. Amen? I'm going to be in trouble, but that's, that's okay. We are hit it and quit it Christians. We hit it once in prayer, and we don't get what we want, and boom, we're gone. We're done. Oh, after all, I asked God for a Maserati. And look at what he gave me. <laughs> Chevy Coburn 2003, right? I asked God for a, a house in Potomac. Look what he gave me. A one-bedroom apartment. Some, some people, he didn't give nothing. See, we are hidden and quitted Christians because we don't persist. We don't find it necessary to keep at it, to keep going. Just like this woman, this Canaanite woman, this foreigner teaches us today. She kept going and kept going. And the disciples got upset. See, you and I, we are like the disciples of Jesus today. When we see people who pray more than us, you know, we begin to get upset. Mm -hmm. They're trying to show off. Mm -hmm. Who knows what they are? Who knows what they did? You know, somebody see you go down on your knees in front of the Blessed Sacrament and, and praying during holy hour, you know, spending one hour in the presence of the Lord. They say, mm, she ain't got nothing to do, you know. You know, big brother is going on and she's watching holy hour. Some of us don't know how to continue to persist because we are carried away by the flow of the world. 
But this woman kept going. Even though the disciples tried to quench her. She, they, they, see, they went to Jesus and said, really? Jesus, really? You, didn't, you don't hear that woman? That woman keep calling on your name? Give her whatever she wants. Let her keep going. She's bothering us. And Jesus turned around to his disciples and said, you know, folks, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So what does Jesus mean? I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Don't worry, this is not Bible study. I'm not going to take all an hour to explain this. But Jesus was telling his disciples that I came for those who believe, not Israel, in quote, as the only people. I came for all the people. The lost sheep, anyone who finds themselves as lost, those are the people that I have come for. Isn't that what Isaiah 56 tells us in the first reading this morning? Isaiah was telling the people of Israel, God loves you, yes, but God loves foreigners as well. Amen? And so Isaiah tells them, the foreigner who joins themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, those who love the name of the Lord, those who become his servant, those who keep the Shabbat free from profanation, and those who hold my covenant, them too I will bring to the mountain. Even St. Paul in the second reading today tells the Romans chapter 11. Paul says, you know, I'm speaking to the Gentiles, those who are foreigners. You know why I'm speaking to the Gentiles? Because those of you who knew that the Messiah came from your hometown, you refuse to accept. So I have decided to preach to the Gentiles so that I can make you jealous enough to change your lives and begin to follow the Lord. Paul, you know, Paul doesn't mean so. That's why I love that dude. He says, the reason I'm preaching to foreigners is because I want you. You who think that you own the Lord. You who think that you are the sons and daughters of the soil. I want you to be jealous. Read, read Romans chapter 11 again. So God loves us. It doesn't matter where you come from and who you are. What color of your skin. Those things are... Nothing in the presence of the Lord. All the Lord wants is for us to shamelessly persist in our prayers. Because in doing so, that's evidence of our faith. This woman kept going on. The Canaanite woman kept moving on. And eventually, Jesus turned around to her and said, you know, you keep asking me for this favor. But you know, it's not right to carry the food you're supposed to give to children and give it to the, the pets, the dogs who are in the house. Now, Jesus, by saying this, didn't mean to hurt her feelings. But if the same thing was to be said to some of us, our feelings will be hurt. You know why? Because we are touchy, feeling people. Because we take ourselves too seriously. This woman knew what she was going for. And she would not allow even comments that seem to be harsh. She didn't allow such comments to be able to deprive her of the blessings that she had been asking God for. And that's the message for all of us this morning, my sisters and my brothers. Do you allow anyone or anything to deprive you of the joy that God alone can give. We cannot. We got to be moved. That's why I say some of us Christians, we are what? Heated and quitted Christians. Because we have not come to a realization that we have to persist in prayer. For persistence in prayer shows that we are indeed faithful people. When we persist in prayer, we show that God is indeed our Father. When we persist in prayer, God is giving us an opportunity to express our faith to Him. 
That's the reason why Jesus kept walking and didn't say a word. That's the reason why Jesus says, I was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That's the reason why Jesus said, I can't take the dogs, the food I'm going to give to children and give it to dogs. Now the woman showed that she had faith in God that she even said, even dogs can eat the scraps that fall from the master's table. Amen. Faith. Faith, persistent in prayer. Shameless persistent in prayer is a sign that we have faith. Evidence of faith. Faith that can move the unmovable. Right? Faith that can shake the shakeables. Faith that can conquer everything, even prejudice. Yes. And so my sisters and brothers, the church today calls us to remember that number one, great faith can be found in unexpected places. In other words, just because we are Catholics doesn't mean we have all the faith in the world. You know, I told them a story at the, at the earlier Mass. I, I, I was walking down, you know, I was going to Benko. You know, I was taking a step, you know, this brother got to look good for summer. So I was taking a couple of steps, you know, all, and then, you know, one of the homeless guys, and, and I know him because sometimes he sleeps in front of our church. So he said, hey, preacher, how you doing? Oh, I'm, dude, I'm doing okay. So you got something for me today? I just dipped him in my pocket and gave him a couple of dollars. And he said, oh, man, that's so good, man. You know, I'm going to pray for you. And my first instinct was, really? You're going to pray for me? I live in the church. Amen. You know, that's what my prideful self was saying to me at that time. The f I'm not kidding you. This is my personal confession. The first instinct was that, really? You homeless dude. You who don't even go to church. You are going to pray for me? I live in the church. If I turn around, that's the blessed sacrament over on the other side, right? But then the voice of the Lord kicked in. And I said, oh, sure. And I bowed my head. Yeah, he cannot put his hands on my head, you know. I was worried that probably get lice or something. But, you know, <laughs> you know, so he put his hands on my head. And, 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 and after a while, I, I kind of relaxed a little bit and he prayed. I, I didn't hear a word of what he prayed, but I knew he was praying with faith. That's the first lesson today. Great faith can come from unexpected places and unexpected people. So don't say, oh, because that's a homeless person. Oh, I wouldn't ask them to pray for me. No, faith can come. That's why Jesus, Jesus said to the woman, oh, woman, great is your faith. This woman was not a Jewish woman, but great is your faith. In other words, Jesus is saying to all the Pharisees and the Sadducees, God's grace is upon this woman. Another lesson we learn is that none of us are foreigners in the presence of God. None of us are foreigners. You know, this may not be scientific, but the reason why some people are white and some people are black is because of where they live. Amen? Mm -hmm. And eventually genetics took effect. People who lived in a closer region and colder region, they tend to be a little lighter in complexion. Those who live in more warmer region tend to be a little bit darker in complexion. And then genetics begin to manifest itself. That's why you have black folks and white folks. And our bodies have adapted to that. But I think that's how we got different colors from the beginning. So none of us are foreigners in the eyes of the Lord. All of us are equal because God loves us equally. Another thing that we learn from God and from the, the message today is that never let your ego or personal pride prevent you from asking favor from God. Never let your ego, never let your pride prevent you from asking God for a favor. Just like the woman kept asking, son of David, have pity on me. And because she put her ego to the side, her pride to the side, what happened? The Bible says, Jesus told her, let it be done for you as you wish. Amen, church. Amen.
it be done for you as you wish. And, and we, we, we read at the last sentence is that that woman's daughter was healed from that hour. Not tomorrow, from that moment where she displayed her faith. So persistent in prayer is not an opportunity to overcome God's reluctance to help us. No, we cannot overcome. If God does not want to help us, there's nothing we can do about it. But persistent in prayer is not to overcome God's reluctance in helping us. But rather, it is our testimony that we will rely on God in good times or in bad. Persistent in prayer is not overcome by our reluctance. You know, people often think that those who pray constantly, those who persist in prayer that they are disturbing God, right? Have you, you know people like that? You say, you know, you disturb God when you pray. No. You know when you disturb God? When you don't pray at all. Your multiple prayer does not bother God a bit. What bothers God is when you refuse to pray at all. So today, I invite all of us, let us storm the throne of God's grace. Yesterday, we celebrate, celebrated what? The assumption of the Blessed Mother. That beautiful solemnity that the Mother of God, the womb that bore the, the Savior of the world was taken up body and soul into heaven. And we sang that beautiful song, Oh, come to the throne of grace. So today, we are coming to that throne of grace with our persistent prayer. Don't let anybody shush you down. Continue to persist in the Lord. Let me end by as it's saying something that we normally say in the streets, right? See, if you have one lover, if you love one person, you don't have the luxury of hitting it and quitting it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Only those who do that are those who have multiple lovers. Amen? We as Christians, we have only one God. We are monotheistic. We have only one God. And so we don't have the luxury of quitting the Lord's grace, the Lord's throne of grace, and going elsewhere. We, have, we don't have the luxury of saying, okay, I'm only worship God this year and not worship Him next year. Uh-uh, what are we going to do the rest of the year? Ah, we only have one God. And so, I have no other God but you. See, that's what we want to approach and say to him, Lord, I have no other God but for you have done for me. You have done what no man has done. And you will do for me. You will do what Church. Can you stand and let's sing and praise him? I have, I have no. Tell him, tell him, we don't get nobody else. I have no other God. I have no. person you don't have the luxury of coming in and going you go down on your knees when you mess up you bring them flowers you buy them chocolate or for the ladies you buy them boxes because they're not washing the ones that they have right we have God by our side and so today we approach the throne of God's grace telling him like this Canaanite woman Lord save us we have done our homework we have read the bible we have gone down on our knees and we have seen that only you alone 
can save us. Only you alone can heal the disease that inflicts us. Only you alone can cure the demonic power that surrounds us. So, Lord, your children gather today to say to you, our God, I have no other God. I have no other God. I have no other God I but you, no Lord. Other God yes, Lord, but, but you, for you, you have done for me. You have done yes, Lord, what no man has done, and you will do for me. follow you and not allow anyone to shush us down we will Lord God shamelessly persist in our prayers today because in doing so we prove to you our God that we trust in you and we have faith Amen I have no other God but you I have no testify to uh, knowing only this one God. I invite us now to recite together the Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed this morning as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the, for the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. My sisters and brothers, Jesus rewarded the persistence of the Canaanite woman who pleaded, reminding God of the love that she has for God. Let us now ask, shamelessly, putting aside our ego and our pride, that God will hear us and answer us. Our response is, Merciful Lord, hear us. Merciful Lord, hear us. We pray for those who, despite facing rejection, hostility, and persecution, continue to live and proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear us. We pray for those who are led in their lives by evil forces and for those affected by evil in this world. We pray that the Lord bring healing to those most vulnerable of his children and take them into his loving protection. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, Lord hear us. us. We pray for those who have lost family and friends through accidents, and for those injured and those who have lost their homes and livelihood through natural disasters, 
May we work tirelessly to bring relief to all in great tragedy. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear us. For all those who are suffering from the COVID-19 virus and other illnesses, particularly for those in the hospital, we pray also for the shut-ins and elderly who at this time may feel particularly vulnerable, isolated, and unable to experience the joys of life. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear us. In our recently celebrated Assumption of the Blessed Virgin into Heaven, a reward for her full acceptance of the will of the Father in accepting the motherhood of the Christ with its pain, suffering, and loss. We pray to the Lord that we too be given the grace to also accept the will of God in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear us. We bow our heads and remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. We pray in a special way on this day for the Ahine family. As on this day marks the one year, the anniversary of the death of Saxon and Ahine, we pray for their family. We pray for the wife, Miss Tina, and the children. We ask God's grace and mercy upon them as they celebrate the anniversary of the death of their father. And for all those who have died, marked with a sign of faith, may they be welcomed into heaven. Let us pray. Give us, Lord, your saving help as we make our prayers trusting and hope and confidence that when we shamelessly follow you, when we shamelessly and persistently offer our prayers to you, not minding our ego and our pride, that you will hear us and mercifully answer us. We make these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord and Son. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gifts, since our praises add nothing to your greatness but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in the company of the choirs of angels, we praise you. As with joy, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather the people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, giving you thanks. He said the blessings, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, giving you thanks, he set the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Luke, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, Wilton, our bishop, the other bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world to our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at your passing from this life, give can admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. But through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we will be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer a sign of peace by bowing to one another. of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
that sees the invincible, expects the incredible, receives the impossible, faith that can conquer anything. Faith that uproots my problems. Faith to know God can solve them. Faith to envision my freedoms. That can conquer anything. Faith to reach the unreachable. Faith to fight the unbeatable. Faith.
With the Lord there is mercy, in him is plentiful redemption. Let us pray. May the partakers of Christ through this sacrament, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that confirmed to his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for a few minutes as we ask the Ahaine family to come forward for a special um, prayer on this anniversary of the death of their father. And yes, as you come forward, remember that you must have faith that can conquer everything, faith that can move the unmovable, faith that can shake the unshakable. All of us today are called to have that faith, the kind of faith that this Canaanite woman had. God, our Father, a year ago you called our Father Sexton from this earth. One year ago we brought him to this church and offered the Eucharistic sacrifice, a farewell for him. We buried him and trust in you uh, to the cares of the families and the worries of the family. And so one year after they come to you asking for your blessings, asking for your peace, asking for joy, that they may continue to live the life that you have given us. Give them the grace to have that faith so that no weapon fashioned against them may ever prosper. Grant them consolation and strength. Grant them faith. Grant them joy. The joy that comes from knowing, loving, and serving you. Lord, we know that grief continues even after years. And so yes, they may grieve, but let they grieve like people who have faith. And so we ask your blessings upon them on this day as they offer thanksgiving to you. May you come and bless them, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Wish a happy birthday to Lamont Dix Sr., uh, John Dix, Shmire Dix, Dolonte, Scott Terrell, Linda Davis, Sharon Nichols, Caroline Fleming, Brenda Edmund, Melissa Hyde, Monique Williams, Trinita Russell. We also want to wish a happy wedding anniversary to Thomas and Paulette Hamlin and to Michael and Rene Mallette, wishing them a happy anniversary. Anybody here celebrating? No. Okay. So please give them a call and wish them a happy birthday or wish them a happy anniversary. Finally, another announcement just to remind us uh, that the census is still going on, especially if you live in the District of Columbia. We are pleading with you to please do the best that you can. Now, it looks like the deadline for the census will be in September and not in October as we thought earlier. So this is time for us to keep asking you to please do the census. If you don't, we are going to suffer for it for another 10 years. And finally, um, I'd like to uh, in welcome back our brother, Kersey Kalai, Sinjay. 
Woo. Our seminarian. As all of you know, uh, CJ went to the novitiate house in New Roads in Louisiana, where he prepared himself to become a Josephite. Thanks be to God, our brother CJ is now a first year professed member of the Josephite. So he is a Josephite. Thank you. So this is his first week back uh, to the DC area. They just got back on Thursday. And CJ was pleased enough to bring the parents to come to thank God. Uh, Mr. and Mrs. Carlyle, you stand and let us see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Welcome. So you know, they came all the way from Louisiana uh, to join town. So thank you. May God continue to be your strength. And uh, we'll continue to take care of your son while you're away, all right? Thank you, all of you, for your wonderful time. Thank you, Marvin, for that wonderful rendition of faith. Oh, that's what we need today. May God bless you all, and may you never lose hope. I won't forget to thank the ministers of hospitality and the lectors. I uh, also thank the camera crew. Uh, uh, thank you all. Uh, the, you don't get to see them. They took the camera off themselves. So, so but we, we know the camera is on you. you know. <laughs> Jokes on you. <laughs> so thank you, and thank you to all the, the choir members. Thank you very much. Amen. If you please stand as we conclude our celebration today. On this day, that we are called to have shameless persistence in praying to God because we know in doing so, we are proving, we are giving evidence that we truly have faith in God. May God's mercy be with us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. 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 May God let his face shine upon you and be merciful to you. Amen. 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 May the Lord who has called us to have that faith that is unshakable, the faith that cannot be moved, may he give us the grace to always follow him even when people try to push us away. May he give us the grace to follow him for we know that in following him, our grace and our joy and our blessings will be assured upon us. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, proclaiming the gospel by your life. Thanks be. Have a blessed weekend to you all. Just want to pray.
Dios bless.